good morning to all of you i welcome you all for this zoonosis webinar to create awareness on zoonotic diseases on this world zoonosis day which is today 6th july 2020 today we will discuss on fungal mediated zoonotic diseases first we will see what is zoonosis a zoonosis is any disease or infection naturally transmissible from vertebrate animals to humans animals play an essential role in maintaining zoonotic infections in nature zoonosis may be bacterial viral or parasitic or may involve unconventional agents this is being a public health problem many of the major zoonotic diseases prevent the efficient production of food of animal origin and create obstacles to international trade in animal products the causative agents of zoonosis include viruses bacteria fungi parasites mosquitoes and ticks the zoonotic diseases of most common concern are zoonotic influenza this disease can be infected with avian swine and other zoonotic influenza viruses such as avian influenza virus subtypes h5n1 h7n9 h9n2 and swine influenza virus subtypes h1n1 h1n2 and h3n2 salmonellosis is a symptomatic infection which is caused by bacteria of the salmonella type the most common symptoms are diarrhea fever abdominal cramps and vomiting symptoms typically occur between 12 hours and 36 hours after exposure and lasts from 2 to 7 days vesnal virus is an infectious disease that first appeared in the united states in 1999 infected mosquitoes spread the virus that caused it people who get this vesnal virus infection usually have no symptoms and or mild symptoms the symptoms include fever headache body ache and skin rash plague is a disease that affects human and other mammalian species it is caused by the bacterium yersinia pestis human usually get plague after being bitten by a rodent that is carrying the plague bacterium or by handling an animal infected with plague the recent emergence of novel coronavirus covid-19 which is causing an outbreak of unusual viral pneumonia all around the world rabies is a viral disease that causes inflammation of the brain in humans and other mammalian species early symptoms can include fever and tingling at the site of exposure brucellosis is a highly contagious zoonosis caused by ingestion of unpasteurized milk or undercooked meat from infected animals or in close contact with their secretions lyme disease is caused by the bacterium borrelia it is transmitted to humans through the bite of infected black legged ticks you may wonder how these zoonotic agents are transmitted from animals to human zoonotic diseases can be transmitted by various ways including through the air by eating contaminated meat or produce through close contact with an infected animal by touching an area or surface 
that an infected animal touched through insect bites like mosquitoes or ticks. Many transmissions occur when people hike, bike, boat or enjoy other activities in the great outdoors. Petting zoos are also common places for a zoonotic disease to be transmitted. Those who live and work in farms are in close contacts with many types of livestock. Livestock is a common carrier of many zoonotic diseases. Zoonotic pathogens are transmitted from animals to human. However, pregnant women, adults aged 65 or older, children below 5 years and people with HIV infection or people with cancer who are going through chemotherapy or whoever with weakened immune systems are more susceptible to zoonotic diseases. In this webinar, we are going to focus more on fungal mediated zoonosis. Fungal infections associated with zoonotic or saprenotic transmission are an important public health problem worldwide. A number of these infections are among the group of the most common fungal diseases including dermatophytosis, sporotrichosis and histoplasmosis. Within this context, it's however notable that some fungal diseases with a zoonotic potential have lacked adequate attention in international public health efforts leading to insufficient attention on their preventive strategies. In this talk, we will discuss on an overview of neglected fungal pathogens that could be carried and transmitted between vertebrate animals and people. Their etiological agents, ecology and geographical distribution, current epidemiology, types of diseases in humans and animals, source of infection and mode of transmission will be discussed. This table shows the list of clinically significant fungi with a zoonotic potential that can cause considerable medical, veterinary or public health problems. Some of these fungi and corresponding infections have been extens extensively investigated by various research groups. This table shows various species of fungi and are transmitted between animals and human through inhalation and direct contact with infected animals such as cattle, sheep, rodents, horses and marine mammals. For example, Microsporum species causes dermatophytosis and this disease is caused by direct contact with infected animals. And this species can infect all domesticated mammals. Cryptococcus species causes cryptococcosis which is mainly transmitted by inhalation of fungi and sometimes through breaks in the skin. This also infects variety of mammalian species, birds, reptiles and amphibians. Adiospiromycosis is caused by Ammonsia species which is caused by inhalation of the fungal spores and this infects wild rodents. Histoplasmosis is caused by histoplasma in human by inhalation of the fungal spores. This also infects cattle, sheep and horses. Blastomyces causes blastomycosis and this is caused by inhalation of the fungal conidia and this also can infect dogs, cats, horses 
and marine mammals. Penicillosis is caused by the emerging pathogenic fungi Penicillium manifi that usually causes a fatal disseminated disease in immunocompromised individuals especially those with human immunodeficiency virus infection. This species of Penicillium is a dimorphic fungi exhibiting a mycelial form at 25 degrees centigrade and a yeast form at 37 degrees centigrade. Penicillosis affects all ages and both sexes, although 90% of the cases reported in the literature are male. Notably, the risk of infection is not restricted to those living in areas where it is endemic. Of note, the mortality rate of untreated infections in HIV infected patients is 100%. The disease is usually disseminated affecting skin, reticuloendothelial systems, lung and gut. Other tissues can also be involved in the disease such as liver, spleen, skin and mucosa. However, penicillosis is a rare infection in domestic animals such as dogs and cats. Lobomycosis is an example of fungal mediated zoonosis. It's a rare chronic granulomatous fungal infection of the skin and subcutaneous tissues. Despite important advances having been made through the use of updated molecular biological techniques, the etiological agent of lobomycosis has never been cultured and grown under in vitro. In 1999, Tabada group proposed the agent in a new genus, Acacia, calling Acacia loboi. Soil and vegetation are believed to be the chief habitat of this fungi. However, increasing reports of the disease is in aquatic animals such as dolphin, has shifted attention to water and aquatic environment. The disease has been diagnosed generally in tropical areas with an average temperature of 24 and relative humidity higher than 75%. This figure shows the clinical manifestations and laboratory features of labomycosis in human and dolphin. Eloid-like lesions over the upper limb of the patient with lobomycosis and with the multiple confluent papules, plagues and nodal lesions are observed. The tissue sample which are which is stained with brocade methamine silver stained section showing multiple isolated and change is in both dolphin sample as well as in human sample. Adiospiromycosis is an example for fungal mediated zoonosis. This is a rare chronic pulmonary infection which is caused by dimorphic fungi from the genus Emansia. The infection is characterized by the presence of very large adiospores in the lungs. Emansia species are found in rodents, insectivores, moles and ground squirrels. Emansia species are environmental pathogens. The infection range from asymptomatic infection through necrogranulomatous pneumonia and even death. Emansia species have an extremely broad host range and infections have been reported in many species of small mammals worldwide. Entomopthoromycosis is also an example for fungal mediated zoonosis. This is a chronic subcutaneous infection 
caused by conidiobolus species. This fungi is present as a commensal in the gastrointestinal tract of amphibians, fishes, reptiles and insectivorous bats. In immunocompromised patients, this fungi can cause endocarditis. Conidiobolomycosis is a type of disease which is reported mainly in horses, sheep and dogs. And this fungi causes ulcerative lesions in mammalian species. So far we have seen different types of diseases that are caused by fungi that are transmitted between animals and human being. Now we can discuss how to prevent these fungal mediated zoonotic diseases. These two zoonotic diseases are common everywhere in the world. However, countries all over the world work constantly to reduce the number of illnesses caused by animals and insects. One way they do is through creating food safety regulations. These regulations reduce the chances of getting a zoonotic disease from something we eat. There are also ways to help prevent getting a zoonotic diseases. These include washing our hands diligently, using insect repellent or other methods to keep mosquitoes, fleas and ticks away. Practicing safe food handling that includes washing off all produce before eating it. Avoid being bitten or scratched by an animal. We have to have our pets vaccinated and we should take them for regular annual visits to the pet clinics. And all the animals should be checked for ticks when exposed to outside. We should not eat, drink or touch our eyes or mouth while we are handling or in close contact with animals. We have to use gloves if we need to handle an animal that is sick or appears to be sick. And we have to keep the areas where the animals are present that should be clean and sanitary. We should not handle any animal or approach in the wild that appears sick. We have to be sure to contact animal control or the local government to have the sick animal removed. We have discussed so far the importance of fungal zoonotic or saprenotic infections. There is no doubt that these types of fungi need to be controlled. Control of human exposure to animal reservoirs can protect susceptible populations and is a critical component of prevention. From a global public health perspective clearly more efforts are needed to raise awareness among the public about the problem for neglected zoonotic diseases mediated by fungi in order to better define the burden distribution mortality and socio-economic consequences and this will also provide an integrated platform of prevention and control strategies.